All right, the sequence of problems I'm going to be working through here is from the titration packet. And this is a problem where we're told some information about the titration that we're going to be running and then asked to solve for the pH at different points in that titration. So I want to start this off by paying attention to the amounts that we're being provided with for the titration. We're told that this is a titration of 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid. So this is our acid with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, which is going to be a strong base. And we should note here that acetic acid is a weak acid, and that's important for this titration because we treat weak acids a little differently than we do strong acids. So for the titration, um, right off the bat, I want to note something here that's going to help make my life a little easier. Um, that is that the fact that the concentration of the acid is the same as the concentration of the strong base means that in the reaction, the neutralization reaction that's going to happen here, where we're going to have the acetic acid being neutralized by the hydroxide, oops, by the hydroxide ion, and that's going to produce our acid and it's going to produce water. In this reaction, we have a one to one mole ratio between our acid and our hydroxide ion. So to get to the equivalence point, I need the same number of moles of the acetic acid and the same number of moles of hydroxide ion. That's going to be the nature of the equivalence point. With the same concentration for the acid and the conjugate base, this means that I'll reach that equivalence point when their volumes are the same. So if I have 25 milliliters of the acid, the number of moles that I'm going to get from that is going to be matched by 25 milliliters of the strong base, right? So the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, when I have 25 milliliters of that, I should have the same number of moles as I have of the acetic acid. This tells me that 25 milliliters is where my equivalence point is going to happen. And that will be important as we're understanding these volumes that we're being, whoops, these volumes that we're being asked to calculate pH at. Okay, so this will be important a little bit later on. So for now, let me get rid of some of this information that we're not going to need for this first part of the problem. But let's just note there that just from the establishment of that first sentence there, I know that my equivalence point should be happening at 25 milliliters. And that's kind of a 121 concept, right? We want to make sure we recognize how to predict where the equivalence point would be just based off the stoichiometry of the neutralization reaction. All right, so let's get into what uh, this first problems asking for. So if we're asked to solve for the pH at zero milliliters of the sodium hydroxide being added, anytime you start at the beginning of the titration with none of the titrant being added, you're really just looking at a solution of either weak acid in solution or weak base in solution, you know, whatever solution you're titrating, we're just trying to calculate the pH of that solution at the beginning. So this means all the information I need is this, uh, 0.1 molar um, sodium, or sorry, 0.1 molar acetic acid and the Ka value for that acetic acid. If I know the initial concentration of the acid and I know the equilibrium constant, I can solve for pH. And this is no different than any other way we've been solving for pH uh, for these weak acids so far in this chapter. So I want to make a note here that zero milliliters, we only have our acetic acid in solution at this point. And so that is why to solve for pH here, I am just going to do a weak acid equilibrium ice table. Okay. So most of you will probably be pretty familiar with this process by now. So I'm gonna write this out somewhat quickly if I can to save a little bit of time here. So I take my initial concentration. I'm going to lose some amount of that. Um, I'm not going to have any conjugate base, and I'm not going to really have any hydronium ion at the beginning, but I am going to gain some amount of both of these. And so then to solve for x, we're going to take that Ka value we were given of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. We're going to set up our equilibrium expression. 
we're going to note that the 10 to the negative fifth means that this is a small enough ka value that we can assume this negative x term in the denominator is really small so that simplifies it to just x squared over 0.1 and when you solve for x here you're going to get um, 1.342 times 10 to the negative third molar and that is going to be your hydronium ion concentration right so once we have the hydronium ion concentration we can solve for the ph by just taking the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration so the 1.342 times 10 to the negative third molar and when you solve this out you're going to get a pH of 2.87. So the pH at zero to milliliters, right? So this would be at the beginning of the titration. Where does the titration curve begin? It begins at 2.87 pH. So if I'm thinking about my titration curve here, this up here a little bit, right? My titration curve for the weak acid is going to look something like this. What I just solved for is the pH at the very beginning, right? So that would be the 2.87 that we're starting at, okay? So then we're gonna move on to our next volume. Now the next volume, oops. The next volume is given as 12.5 milliliters. Now I wanna think about where 12.5 milliliters is gonna be on my titration curve. Let me change my colors here a little bit. Right, so 12.5 milliliters. Well, we decided at the beginning here, if you remember, based on the problem, we're expecting our equivalence point to be at 25 milliliters, right? So our equivalence point, we're expecting to be at 25 milliliters. So let me mark that on here, right? The equivalence point at 25 milliliters, we're gonna expect to be right there. So 12.5 milliliters, right, that we have in this next part, change my color 12.5 milliliters that's going to be the halfway point now we talked about in class that with a weak acid titration when you get to the halfway point you will have turned half of the acid into conjugate base Right, so half of the acetic acid will have been converted into conjugate base. Now you could work through the math for this, and the key uh, for the worksheet is going to show that we have worked through all the math for this to figure out, you know, well, how many moles did I start with for my acid? If I've neutralized half of those moles, how many moles do I have for my conjugate base? Um, and how much am I left with for my acid? and then figure out the concentrations of those at this point in the titration. And um, that involves recognizing that we've added this 12.5 milliliters to the original 25 milliliters that we started with up here. And so, um, you know, you get a total volume that's different and that's important in calculating your concentrations. But anyways, regardless of all that, you can do all this sort of math to just figure out that the concentration of the acid and the concentration of the conjugate base are going to be equal to each other. And we know from our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, pH equals pKa plus the log of the A minus concentration over the HA concentration. We know from this uh, equation that when this ratio right here is equal to one, when the two concentrations are the same, that this whole term turns into zero. So at this point where we've converted half the acid into conjugate base, our pH is actually going to be equal to our pKa. So really, at this point in the problem, all we got to do is solve for pKa. And we were given Ka in the problem. So we can take the negative log of the Ka, which was uh, 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, and we can solve for the pH, and that's gonna get us 4.74 as our value here. 
And you'll note here that this makes sense for the titration that we started at 2.87 and after having titrated for a bit, we've gotten up to a pH of 4.74. But you can really shortcut this part if you recognize that this is the halfway point, right? That this is the halfway point. That that means pH is equal to pKa if this is a weak acid. And so all you got to do is solve for your pKa there. Okay. So then we're going to move on to the next volume. Now, the next volume is our equivalence point. So we're dealing with the equivalence point at, at this uh, point in the titration. Now, the special thing about the equivalence point is that all, all of the acid has been converted at this point to the conjugate base. So that means that in solution, we have just conjugate base, and we want to know what the concentration of that conjugate base is going to be. The way we can figure this out is we can take the moles that we had of our acid to begin with, recognize that we'll have that many moles of conjugate base, and then divide by the new total volume to get what the concentration of the conjugate base would be. This is a crucial first step here. So I'm going to take the volume that we started with of the acid solution, I'm going to multiply that by the concentration of the acid solution that we started with. So this was the 0.1 molar acetic acid solution. And when I solve this out, I'm going to get 2.5 times 10 to the negative third moles of the acid. Now I'm recognizing that at the equivalence point, this means I'm going to have 2.5 times 10 to the negative third moles of the conjugate base. Because again, all of this acid has been turned into conjugate base when we get to the equivalence point. So I'm now starting with this many moles of conjugate base. Now I need a concentration here. So to get my concentration of the conjugate base, I'm gonna take the moles and divide it by the volume that I have at this point in the titration. Now we started with 25 milliliters of this acid solution. So that was our starting volume. We've added to that 25 milliliters of the uh, sodium hydroxide, right? Because at, at step C, we're at the point where 25 mils of sodium hydroxide have been added. So this means I have a total, right? Total of 50 milliliters at this point in the titration. So for my, concentration calculation, I need to take the number of moles of the conjugate base that I have in the solution at this point, and I need to divide that by the total volume in liters, right? Important to make sure that this is in liters, okay? And if you do all of that, you're going to get a concentration of 0.05 molar. So notice that is significantly less than what we had for the acetic acid, which was 0.1 molar at the beginning. Now, by the time we get to the equivalence point, we've only got 0.05 molar for the conjugate base concentration. So while the moles of the acid will all be turned into conjugate base, that does not mean that the concentration of the acid is equal to the concentration of conjugate base. And that's because we've added, right, that volume of uh, sodium hydroxide to the solution, which has caused us to have a um, higher volume. Okay. Now with this, this allows us to now do a basic equilibrium table because we have a base in solution. So at the equivalence point of a weak acid titration, if all you have is conjugate base in solution, then you want to be doing the um, basic equilibrium. So I take that new concentration that I have of my uh, conjugate base, so the 0 0.0500 molar, and that becomes the value I'm using at the beginning of this ice table. And then we would just want to solve for x. Now you need Kb to solve a basic equilibrium. So you have to go take the Ka and use it to solve for the Kb, which gives you 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10th. But then we can set this up as x squared over 0.0500, where we assume that that negative x term is really small. And this gives x 
is equal to 5.27 times 10 to the negative 6. And that is your hydroxide concentration. So you have to do some extra steps to get that into a pH.